2020 has been a year that has kicked everyone's pants on the planet. And if you don't have pants, it set your house on fire. 2020 is like that ex that you never really dated but is obsessed with you for some reason. And when you don't show them enough attention, they, well, you know, commit arson. But it looks like, thanks to the pandemic and all its mismanagements, we will have less nurses to help take care of the sick and dying in the coming years. With hospitals maxing out beds due to the influx of COVID-19 cases, they're stressed and new nurses aren't being hired. Hospitals are claiming that they can't spend their money uh, on, on training new incoming nurses and waste PPEs. I mean, of course, if the Trump administration had focused on the production of PPEs in the very beginning of the pandemic, we probably wouldn't be in a mess like this. Hell, even GE employees went on strike to stop building jet engines to focus on producing protective equipment. To produce jet engines when flights are grounded is, well, dumb. Look, aren't CEOs supposed to be smart? Isn't that the justification society uses to keep billionaires around? Look, I think this pandemic has proved a lot of things. And one of those things is that the more money you have, the more it rots your brain cells. Hell, Jeff Bezos kept his warehouse open after there were several positive cases. I mean, that is dumb at best. And at worst, it's callous and heartless and inhumane. Those are the only options for the brain capacity of billionaires, by the way, is either it's inhumane or dumb. Either way, these people should not be in charge of anything that involves, I don't know, living things. The hiring freeze is affecting veteran nurses who are in the thick of dealing with COVID-19 patients. They work grueling hours, double shifts, while dealing with the deadliest virus this side of the century. A fresh new crop of nurses would be of immense help to these veterans. Perhaps instead of trillions upon trillions of dollars given to Wall Street if the states would have invested in creating triage centers and ensuring new nurses can be hired and trained, maybe, just maybe, we wouldn't be in a mess like this. Hospitals are looking at incoming nurses and saying that they're a waste of training hours, money, and equipment. So if these new nurses would be the future of medicine and caring for patients are looked at as dollar signs and waste of equipment, why would they continue in an industry that has clearly stopped caring about them? Now, according to NPR, an average registered nurse makes roughly $113,000 a year, along with the thousands upon thousands of dollars of debt from schooling. Now, a lot of people get into medicine not because they'd be making buco bucks, but because they want to help folks. And if the industry bars them from doing that, why would they stick around in that industry? It'd be like going to your favorite restaurant, but... As they bring out your meal, you get slapped across the face by the owner. I mean, the meal is probably still good, but your face hurts as you attempt to enjoy your food. And you're left puzzled as to why you got slapped in the face in the first place. You've been a patron of this restaurant for such a long time. You always tip very well. Why would they slap you in the face like this? Look, veteran nurses are looking for help. To them, the pressure of dealing with COVID patients, regular patients, and all the paperwork involved would be eased with incoming nurses. Plus, they wouldn't work long hours. That means less mistakes and less death. And overall, in the long run, that means a better financial situation for the hospital too. But unfortunately, this is a healthcare system run by capitalism. And the long run has never really mattered in capitalism. In capitalism, it's all about the short term. It's a race to make the most money in the shortest time possible. And bonus points if you leave corpses and tired bodies in your wake. A healthcare system run by capitalism is like a lawyer's commercial, right? Every lawyer's commercial promises you that they can get you cash now, not a bunch of money over the long term. And this is the same way. 
Look, hospitals are looking to make cash now, not looking to the future of caring for patients. I mean, this is why Andrew Cuomo, the famed governor of New York, cut 500 hospital beds in Brooklyn just before the pandemic. And during the pandemic, he gave billionaires a tax break while cutting $400 million from Medicaid to secure the health care system. The short-term option made him cash now. In the long term, it cost the state of New York human lives. But hey, a few extra billionaires might vacation in the Finger Lakes, so I guess it's all worth it, right, Andy? Look, it was astounding that a lot of Americans were clamoring for a man like Andrew Cuomo to run for president. And based on his riveting briefings, which included things like what day of the week it is and what his kids had for breakfast that day, he might be the neoliberal top contender for the presidential platitude machine in 2024. Nurses across the nation went on strike several times over in the last nine months over the poor treatment and conditions they have to work under. It's almost like they're trying to send a warning to the powers that be that they won't stand to be treated this way. I mean, the only reason they returned to their posts was because of this COVID surge that skyrocketed in their respective cities and states. And the reason they surged that way is because of faulty leadership. As if the hiring issue wasn't enough, thanks to the uncertainty of how to deal with the education system, teaching new nurses their skill and trade has come under fire. The turnover for nursing professors is high, partly due to pay. Nursing professors uh, are making, on average, $60,000 a year. That's a little under, what, half of what registered nurses make? But during the pandemic, there were other challenges that presented themselves because the only institution that was trying to figure out how to educate people during the pandemic was the American Teachers Federation. All hell broke loose to, during the semester. For nursing, the challenge was not only the class sizes, but the proper training for those programs. The, there were more applicants to these programs, but not enough room to accept all of them. And those that were ex accepted had the challenge of hands-on training in the medical field, right? It's not like these nurses and doctors can learn how to administer a proper IV virtually by playing Milton Bradley's operation. If there are less nurses and doctors being accepted in these programs and less getting hired over the course of the next 10 years, it'll affect the quality of health care people receive. Overworked nurses will quit. And Nancy Pelosi and her pro-corporate cohorts like to call these nurses heroes. And they are. But these congressional cretins don't treat them like they are. Look, the reality is that the American government knew about this situation before March. American hubris prevented us from taking action because the virus dare not enter the sanctity of the United States. Well, not unless it files the right immigration paperwork, but, but it did dare. It did dare enter the sanctity of the United States itself. And instead of taking action to help people and its frontline workers, the United States government chose to use platitudes and pointless display of empty thanks to its healthcare heroes while enriching the banks, the insurance agencies, and big pharma. Right? Look, look over there. It's a bird and a plane to honor people that we kind of don't give a shit about but need to exploit for our profits. Gaze into its shininess. And there was knowledge of the fall resurgence as well, which means that they could have taken all the precautions they failed to take in March. The U.S. spent $400 million in the mil display of military powers instead of using that amount to help their healthcare heroes and the American people. In the next decade to come, the less than average healthcare services won't be because of bad doctors or nurses or socialism, but because the Democrats and Republicans who set them up to fail from day one. There is an opportunity here, an opportunity to better the healthcare system for patients and its staff. 
realizing that healthcare is a human right will not only mean that people don't drown in medical debt, but nurses and doctors can receive the proper equipment and care they need to ensure a healthy populace. Universal health care isn't just good for people, but also doctors and nurses. But it's also good for improving the quality of health care in general. And overall, it's good for humanity. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this episode. Hey, if you uh, enjoy uh, this content and you would like to uh, help this show out, uh, you're, you're a fan of the show, you're a fan of the things that I do and you want to help out, uh, there is a couple different ways you can do that. If you are in a position where you can financially contribute to the show, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. You can make a one-time donation or you can make a, become a sustaining member and make monthly contributions to the show. Uh, but I know things are tight. I know we are in uh, in a difficult time right now. So financial contributions are not something that you can make. Uh, you can also share this stuff out. Sharing is a big way that you can help out a show like this. I have uh, usually a lot of my content gets censored, gets suppressed by uh, the larger tech companies like Facebook, like YouTube. Uh, so I depend on you guys sharing and getting the word out. Uh, and you can find all of all this stuff, including past episodes of the show, videos, my stand-up comedy albums, links to donate, ways to share, uh, right on my website, which is krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you guys so much. Uh, 